2 Timothy chapter 3. We will read from verse 1. And we should be reminded of our thought today. Visible signs in the last days. Amen? Visible signs in the last days. Father bless us today. Thank you for doing it thus far. For protecting us. For the same service today as one week to never. Minister unto us as a word of hope. Father, we pray that we may let your words fall on good grounds within our minds, within our hearts, within our thoughts. Let great things be accomplished as we hear and take heed of your words. Bless these words to our hearts and give us a wonderful time. Use me as your other hand, that I can be a blessing to your people as I minister your word unto them. In Jesus' name. Visible signs in the last days. Amen. If we would go back and read the book of Peter, in the second Peter, it's not to make me my notes, but as I made a sermon, thought come to my mind and just let you know. There's a passage that says, since the fathers fell asleep, amen, all things continue the same way, amen. But Peter reminds us that the same words that were spoken in the last days, that God said how he was going to overthrow the world with the flood, it happened. Amen. And whatever God said before, and was prophesied. God kept his words. And it's the same words that when God went down to Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed it. Amen. It is the same word that we are proclaiming today. The word of God it doesn't change. Of course, there might have been different times, different dispensations in which it was written. And there were different traditions, but nevertheless, it is the word of God. So as it was then, it is now. So God is faithful when his word is being spoken, he will bring it to pass. Amen. It was said in Numbers 23. Amen. When the king or more wanted Balaam to bless, to curse the children of Israel, rather. and as he presented himself before the Lord, God blessed him instead. Amen. And in the passage in verse 19, it says. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is the son of man that he should pray. He said, God has said it. God has spoken. And it shall be. He said, God has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. Hallelujah. And Balak tried to persuade Balaam to bless the children of God. Balaam decided, I can't keep it because God has blessed. And he's not a man that he should lie. So when God said it, brother, we can wrestle. Amen. If any of you have a fish in a hook of fish and it gets trouble before you bring it to land in the boat. Amen. You will have an understanding. Amen. That no matter how we wrestle, we can't get away. Amen. Say, God has said it. Amen. God has spoken. 
and I cannot change it. God has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Amen? So when we are blessed of God, all we have to do is rest ourselves and relax. And let our enemy and our haters and our gorgeous, let them fret themselves and carry on. Because you know what happened? They cannot change it. He said, God has blessed. Hallelujah. And I cannot reverse it. Amen. And if you should read the story, you will see. He still went two other times. Totally went three times to see God will change him. And he said, I'll say, God has blessed and he can't change it. But every time after that he went, God blessed more and more. Hallelujah. And when the king realized that, boy, God is blessing, blessing them, hallelujah. He told me, don't bless them, don't trust them, but don't bless them either. Amen. Leave it alone. Amen. So all what I'm saying, hallelujah, that when God has spoken, we can change it. Amen. He said, this go on that in the last days, 2 Timothy 3, 1, the perilous time shall come. As we look around us, we are not only seeing and hearing perilous times, but you know what happened? We are living in those times. Today, right now, we are living in dangerous times. Times in which we ourselves, we can't really put it together. And those who supposedly are, or think they are, are they are smarter and more intelligent than us and have the equipment and the quality to do research. Amen. They themselves seem not to have the handle on anything. So you can see the times in which we are truly living. It is time of perplexity. Men heart are failing us we fear for those of us who are not vaccinated some of us are thinking about being vaccinated some of us are saying we are not going to be vaccinated some of us we are like the instrument that the jugglers are juggling with up, up and forth, back and forth, in our minds, as intelligent as we are, we are still wavering between our decision because of the times in which we live. Hallelujah. So we too, as children of God, when we read the Word of God and we have come to a passage like this. And we read that in the last days, perilous time shall come. It causes us to wonder if truly we are in the last, 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 last days. But we know that we are living in perilous times. So that if we are that intelligent, we should come to an understanding to accept the fact that we are in the last days. Because the days in which we are living is very, very dangerous. And then I use the word say topsy turvy, you know, all twisted head over heels and upside down, not having the handle on it not being able to understand it or not 
having it under control. So we are living in a time like this. When we Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When we are being touched in these days, very much so. When we are being hurt in these days, because of the times in which we are living. Amen. Many, many years ago, we were just relaxing and breathing through life. But if we will be truthful with ourselves, our lives are changed because of the days in which we are living. They are so different that it is not like usual before. It is not normal anymore. Of course, you might wake up and have a bath, brush your teeth, and, and, and go to work, etc. And do things that you are capable and able to do and have been doing for years and daily. But in spite of it, it is changed. It has been a very dramatic change. And because of that, men have are failing them with faith. But may the God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, hallelujah, grant us that inner strength that comes from Him and Him alone who is able to sustain us in these days because we need godly sustenance to continue to live in these perilous times and days that we are living in. Oh, so many people in these days have been hurt, have been crying, have been lonely, have feeling in such a way in which they themselves don't know how to explain or describe the way in which they were feeling. But when we look into the Word of God, we will be able to have an understanding that it was foretold or prophesied in the Word of God that these days will come in the last days. Amen? Because of our lifetime. Amen? Because we have forsaken God. Because we are living our lives like how we want to live it and not like how God ordained that we should live it. So, we are living our own lifestyle and not God's lifestyle. And we have to bear the consequence. Because the word of the Lord said in Galatians that we must not be deceived. Because what a man sow, he will reap. It says, if we sow to the flesh, of course. We are going to reap corruption. But if we sow to the Spirit, we will reap life everlasting. Amen? Hallelujah. So, verse 2 said, Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Hallelujah. Probably you have had that experience of 
knowing and living among covetous people. I can give you reasons or examples. Living among covetous people. And sometimes, what about you? Sometimes your own family, your old friends, who are close to you, not your enemy. Because you know that they enemy and they will try to stay far, you will try to stay far. But when one is so close to you, hallelujah, in your family, and they're committing you, amen? Because you're taking a little picture in church. Hallelujah. Or oh, do what you're doing. And you know that individual so much. It hurts you in the heart. But there are many people who are coveting others when they don't have a reason to covet others. That's the point of it. We are living in perilous times. We are living in dangerous days. Because men heart are evil. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are covetous. They are boastful. They are proud. They are blasphemous, disobedient to parent, unthankful, unholy. There was an example that we can. Jesus gave an example in Luke chapter 19 of this guy who was so boastful. Luke chapter 18 of verse 9. The Bible said, And he speak this power unto certain who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and this eyes on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We read some time ago in Bible study. Therefore, thou art in excuse, in inexcusable, without excuse, O man, whosoever thou art that judges, for thou that judgest another, doeth thou the same things. Amen. So when we think that we are better than others, and we are doing the same thing like others, and we are doing worse things than others, and we think that we can pump our chest and because we've been lifting some weight and we have some good muscles to flex our muscles, amen, we are going no place. So Jesus spake this parable and he said, two men went up into the temple to pray. He said, the one of Pharisee, Luke chapter 80, of verse 9, he said, and the other a publican, and you should know the difference between a Pharisee and a publican. And how the Pharisees think that they are better than the publican. So, since they are, and since they are more eloquent and educated than the publican, they began boasting and being proud. Amen. 
and be not thankful. And think that they are holy, but they are unholy. So he said, Verse 11 said, The five stood up and prayed thus within himself. Amen. He said, God, I thank you that I am not as other men are. Hallelujah. Put himself up on a pinnacle. Amen. Somebody said, the harder you come, the harder you fall. So the higher you go, the harder you fall. So he put himself upon a pinnacle. And he began to impress God. Or try to impress God. And to begin to pray within himself. These are the days in which we are living in. But he that exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbled himself, Jesus said, he shall be exalted. So he began to pray within himself. He said, I am not an extortioner. I am not an unjust person. I don't commit adultery. So you see how far he went? He said, or oh, you are this publican. Who told him the man was an adulterer? Amen? How did he know that? But because he was so self-centered and proud and boastful and he was lifting up himself, then he had to degrade the other man. That God can get the message. As if God is lying. As if God don't know the heart of man. As if God can see through him. So he himself was not only praying, praying for himself, but he was praying about the other person. Hallelujah. How he was an unjust person, how he was an extortioner, and he was evil and adulterer. So as they continued to pray, because he said two men went up together in the temple to pray. So he said, I fast twice in the week. He said, I gave tithes to all that I possess. So, having given these commandments before, by God to the children of Israel, he told God that he was living according to the standard that you expect me to live. Amen? Hallelujah. So he said he gave tithes to all. But brethren, God knows the heart of you and I. We can't fool him. Neither can we impress him, but we can please him if we live according to his word and what he tells us to do. So, he prayed. And the publican who didn't work too close to the 
altar. But he's standing afar off. He would not even lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. Hallelujah. But smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Amen? So this Pharisee, he was not a sinner. Because he was not born in sin. Neither was he, according to him, was shaped in iniquity. Amen? So his mother delivered him like Jesus. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. A godly deliverance. Amen? Just pause it for a while and humor you a little. Probably I did before. It was told that a young lady in the church got pregnant and she was taken to the doctor by the mother. And the doctor, having examined her, told the mother that she was pregnant. And the mother replied, that she knows not a man. So the doctor returned again to his office and came out with the same report. And the mother replied in the same manner. So he returned again. And this time he wasn't coming out of his office for nothing. But they were waiting on him. And when she couldn't bear it any longer, she entered into the office. And when she entered into the office, the doctor had his window open, he was looking in the east. And when she questioned the doctor, the doctor replied, I'm looking in the east because the last time this could happen, three wise men was coming out of the east. So, you get the picture. So, we can see, amen, that some people get pregnant without any intercourse. Amen. So, Father tell himself, have mercy upon me, sinner. So, Jesus continued to tell me, this man went down to his own house justify rather than the other for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased and he that humbled himself shall be exalted so paul said in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 he said wherefore let him that thinketh his standard take heed Let's see Paul. When you think you are standing, Amen, you will fall. Or you may fall. Because Peter know it in himself. Though all men will forsake the Lord, I will not forsake you. And he know that. And he meant that. But the pressures of life when it comes upon you, you don't know how you're going to react. Mm. Amen? When the time came, the Bible said, it said, I know not the man. When the time came, the Bible said that he swore he know not the man. Amen? So in our days in which we are living, it's perilous times. People uh, put themselves in Places to think that they are better than you, they are proud, and Jesus gave the example of those fellows who went up into the temple to pray, and how one think and how the other prayed unto him, and who was more justified than God. So when we humble ourselves, 
and we take the low seat and we listen to what God is saying and we live a life that is pleasing unto God. We will be blessed of God. So don't think that you're better than the other person. And you can, you know, some people feel like though you're a piece of art, a chicklet, or chewing gum, and they go just take you in your mouth and just chew you up and speak you out. Because of pride. Because of the accomplishment in life. Amen? Amen. But I want to remind us that we brought nothing in this world. And it is certain we shall carry nothing out of this world. Hallelujah. No matter what we have, no matter what we have attained, no matter what we have accomplished, naked we came, wise men said, as we came up with nothing in our hands, so we are going to return with nothing in our hands. Amen. He said, Fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of men. All the things that you have, all the things that we have, you know, you know, I'm not a rich man, I have to hold chop, but take them with me. Hmm? I can't, as a matter of fact, one chop can't even hold in the grave. So how would I be able to take it? And how would I be able to drive it? Amen? So as the times seem to be difficult in our times and being so perilous and man has turned away from God and become bolstered and proud and disobedient and unthankful and most of all unholy, living an ungodly life on top of it all. We live in a life that is not pleasing unto God. Amen? But brethren, many of our teachers in the Bible, on the radio, I can't understand them. When I say I can't understand them, I can't agree with them. Amen? Well, we have said it again before. As long as you're saved, you can't you can lose your salvation. Amen? So then, if you can use your salvation, you can be a doctor. Huh? You can be a murderer. Huh? You can be a fornicator. You can be a thief. Because you're saved. Amen? That's why I understand it. I can't understand that. Oh, I can't agree with them. I understand them. But I am not agreeing with them. No wise. Amen? Because as you, we read that in these perilous times that men are going to be unthankful, truth breakers, false accusers, unnatural. And you know, we are totally unnatural in Bible study. Men changing the natural use into that which is against nature. Men with men, it is unnatural. And it will not be accepted with God. Hallelujah, and as I said before, there's only one example in the Bible that is there when men go with men, what God has done with them, burn them up. Read the entire Bible, and when you find the next one, when God has mercy on them, let me know. <laughs> You can show me, I'm willing to learn. But of the woman in John 8 that was taken in the very act of adultery, God, Jesus said to her, go and sin no more. He had mercy, he showed compassion upon her, but not with men, with men. It's time to call the executioner. <laughs> Only example. Mm -hmm. I'm not a lawyer. But when you go to court, the judge will, after the case, before you make a summary, say, give me a quote, a case history. In men with men. Hallelujah. I'll be glad to give the, the judge the case history. That God went down to Sodom and Gomorrah and they wanted to, hallelujah, Sodom and the angels and God burned them up, your honor. With the woman in the act of the adultery. Hallelujah! 
Oh, glory to God. It is natural for a man to go with a woman. Hallelujah. God said. We are those who accuse you. Go. But try your best. You might be hot. You didn't say that. And you might be burning. But, but you know, take it easy. Don't do it anymore. Get married. Amen? You know, in Hebrews, this old man, he said, marriage is honorable in all. And the bed is undefined when you're married. But it's a homogamous and adulterous God will judge. So if you're a homogamous and you're a adulterer, according to his intelligent fellow, on TBM, you're still saved. So I wonder what judgment God going to judge you with. Or what he's going to, you know, sentence he's going to sentence you with. Amen? But if you read in Revelation, I think it's 20, so we don't know. He said, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and all liars and bombers and adulterers and all these things. He said, they shall have their part in the lake of fire, with burden with fire and brimstone. Right? God will burn them. He said, but they say they put you. Amen? So, time will pass. Amen? Five to one. Amen? <laughs> Give me this last example we don't go to close. Amen? So in the last days, perilous time shall come. We're living in perilous time. We're living in dangerous time. We're living in, 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 in times when we, we, hallelujah, even though, hallelujah, we might be vaccinated, we still have to put our mask. Sometimes we still want to put our mask because we're afraid to catch it again. And if we catch it again, hallelujah, they say that going to hurt you. But we're telling ourselves that we put our mask again. You see how dangerous and how fearful it is? And how our hearts are failing us with fear? Amen? These are the days in which we are living. Hard times, difficult times. Times when we don't know what to do. Times when we are thinking about what to do. You know? And when they will demand that every one of us have to take it, what are we going to do? Amen? So these people who are living proud in our day, I'll give you one more example. Amen? In 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. He said, and Behenadan, the king of Syria, he gathered all his hosts together, and there were thirty and two kings with him, and horses, and chariots, chariots, and he went up and besieged Samaria, and war against it. And he sent messenger unto the king of Israel into the city and said unto him, Thus said Behenadad, thy silver and thy gold is mine. Thy wife also and thy children, even the goodness, are my whatever your heart is mine, your children is mine, your wife is mine, your gold is mine, your silver is mine, your donkey, everything you have, the best things you have, in your home that surround you, that makes you comfortable, all is mine. Covetous. Hallelujah. Everything is mine. So, it was Ahab at the time. And we know the life, style of Ahab. And the king of Israel said to him, Lord, O king, according to his name, he said, I am mine, and all that I have, and all that I have, amen, is his time. And the messenger came again and said, Thus take up the hammer and say, Although I have sent unto thee, say, Thou shalt deliver unto me silver and gold, and thy wives and thy children. Yet I will send my messenger unto thee tomorrow about this time, and they shall search thy house and the house of thy servant, and shall be that what shall be splendid in my eyes. They shall put in their hand and take it away. Then the king of Israel called the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you see how this man seeketh 
mischief for he said unto me, for my wife and for my children and for my, and for my children and for my God, and I deny him not. And all the elders and the people said unto him, ha, not unto him, no consent. When he said unto, said, un, said unto the messenger of Behenaya, tell my lord the king all that thou didst send me for thy servant at the first I will do. But this thing I may not do. And the messenger depart and brought him word again. And Mahalina said unto him, The God do so unto me, and more also, if the dust of Samaria shall suffice for handful for all the people that follow me. And the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let not him that girded on his arm as force himself as he that put it off. Amen. Do you understand what he was saying? He was boasting and telling, Hallelujah, Ahab, what he was going to do. And if you continue to read, he was saying he had 32 kings. And Israel was just like two little flocks. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, where the tombs and trees are God. Amen. In his name. As long as God is there, you have the majority. Amen. Hallelujah. Elijah so much and Elijah. Amen. And the Syrian full the whole country. And Elijah said unto his servant, They that are with us, and more than they that are with them. But he couldn't see. But he said, Lord, open his eyes. Mm. Hallelujah. He asked his and chariots of fire surrounding Elijah. When will we are protected by God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when we know we are protected of God, and when God is protected, us, don't fear, don't worry. When we live right, don't fear death. You know why you shouldn't fear death? If you go to sleep when you go home and you're dead, you don't know. Mm -hmm. huh? Sure. What are you feeling it for? You go to sleep. Now if you get in an accident and you get hit and you get hurt, badly you will feel hurt. But as I say, you go home and you lie down. You know how much people that don't lie down when you wake up yet? <laughs> but they feel it. What are you feeling it for? Amen. Paul said he prayed for me to live his Christ and to die his day. So if you're dead, you're dead. You, wake up, you, wake up, you, you, don't, you don't even know you're dead. And, and except probably if you wake up in heaven. <laughs> Amen. You know the story of, of the rich man and the poor man. In hell he lifted up his eyes. Then he thought he was dead in hell. Hallelujah. But in Christ. Amen. Transition. He does sleep in. He does transfer and take a sleep. Amen. So brethren this morning. Amen. Ahab said to the Hennel, Let not him that put it on his hands boast it as him that taken it off. In other words, he was saying, You see how Goliath had this coat of mail? And you see how we have this man before him bearing a sheep? And you see how he was close and just his foreheads were exposed? Amen. And he think that he was big and bad and mighty. And how he was going to take David and do him like when you, ha hallelujah, when you just catch up a fowl and we don't pull it apart, but you take your machete and you just chop it up. He said, this is what I'm going to do with you. So he had on all his arm for war. But he said, not you know who war. You know, but he did he, not come back. Because if you die in the army, you can't take off your harness. Let not him that put it on his arm, harness, boast, hallelujah, but him that take it off. And the little two flocks in Israel put a licking on them, which they will never forget. Amen? So, we're living in a time of boasting, being proud, being blasphemous, being unthankful, being unholy, you know, and being confused and being perplexed. 
and how to the normal, you know the life we live in. I have a mask to put on and I go and buy some stuff and I to put it on. Amen? These are times and days in which we are living in. It's, it's not natural anymore. Amen? Jesus said in Matthew 24, and if you read it, Amen? The times are going to come in the last days. And but it will be easy. So, since it's not easy, it's not easy. Amen? Hallelujah. But, in closing, this morning, a question was asked, Abraham, to God, will thou destroy the righteous for the wicked? God said, no way. Amen? No way. That's why he took Lot out of Sodom before he called fire and brimstone on those homosexuals. Amen? So who want to agree with them? I want to take sides with them. Brother, <laughs> God gave me a free will. Hallelujah. But when I know you're taking sides with them, I'm going to stand afar off. Amen? I'm not a contentious person, a hasty person. Amen? That's not my character. So you're not going to get me out of here, but I am watching. Amen? Even though you think I'm seeing you, I'm not seeing you. Amen? So this morning, be encouraged and be reminded that the times in which we are living, it's not easy. Okay? It is not easy, and it's not going to get any easier, and or better, any, any better. But while we meditate on God, on God, amen, God is going to see us. God bless you. Praise the Lord.